Okay, quick note before anyone turns off the video or skips ahead or anything like that. We are doing a, or well, me, I'm doing a stream on Twitch right now when this video airs on my favorite game of all time. There, I will be playing it for a couple hours and you can talk to me about whatever you want with the channel. You can ask why I like the game that I'm covering, or you can ask what t what it takes to make an episode of Chronicles, or really anything. You can go on there right now on Twitch and watch that. And also, a couple little notes before we get, we get going. Um, if you are interested in supporting me for at least a dollar a month, just a dollar a month, uh, then you can go and support me and this channel on Patreon. There you can find the latest episode of this new series that we're going to be showing and debuting at the end of this episode called Debut. And that's going to be about Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. So if you want, just support us for a dollar. That's all I ask. And then you get that episode. And any episodes as soon as they're made. And if you are feeling inclined to just watch the episodes that are premiering with this video and not that you don't want to hear anything else, then just skip to the end where I'll put a time code around here and then you can go do that and go watch that. But anyway, it's time to get on with the show. It has been one year. One year since I started this whole thing. Since I started covering games. Since I started revealing the past of our favorite franchises and some hidden ones too that no one knew about or was known but hadn't been explained in detail. Over this time, over this year, working with tons of talented people I've come to learn one thing. Chronicles of Gaming isn't about video games. Chronicles of Animation and Filmmaking, which will be coming soon, aren't about animation and filmmaking. Chronicles is about people and the story behind their lives. That is what Chronicles is. That is what I want it to be. And I feel that I haven't been able to do that for ages, but finally, finally, we're getting to the nitty gritty. We're getting to the core of Chronicles. And I'm just so excited to be back. Happy anniversary to Chronicles. This channel is now a year old and has 3,500 subscribers about. That's actually really good for only being a year old. For example, it took me about a year before I even passed the 1,000 subscriber mark. So this channel's doing pretty well. And that's all thanks to Chris's excellent work in writing and editing all of these videos. They are quality content, very well put together and well built. And it's my hope that as time goes on, it will only get better and better. Fancier looking and nicer sounding and just better in every way. So look forward to that for the next year. And hey, it'd also be really cool if you shared this channel with all your friends who are also into history of gaming type things. Because the more support this channel gets, the more content it's able to produce for you. It's a symbiotic relationship. Happy Anniversary Chronicles! You do your research and give information on video games like no other gaming channel on YouTube. Seriously respect it. Hi everyone, Hyperion here, and I'd like to wish a happy anniversary to Chronicles. I've watched this channel grow over the last year, and it's been an exciting adventure. Throughout this journey, I think the most admirable thing I've noticed about this channel is the sheer ambition of it. Chris has put a ton of work into trying to make the best possible channel he can, and while everything he wants to do might not be feasible right now, I know that he'll find a way to make it all work. The channel has covered some of my favorite games as well as ones that I've never played, but in every series there is some information about the development of these games that is new and exciting. There is nobody out there going this in-depth into a game's history, and I believe that understanding the people behind the games you love, or any creators behind any medium, gives you a much better understanding and appreciation for what went into it. So here's to Chronicles, and let's see another year of innovation. 
Happy Anniversary Chronicles, you've reached a stepping stone in your YouTube life. How's it feel? I remember first coming across this channel when Loxton posted one of the Fire Emblem videos he voiced for on Twitter. When I gave it a watch, I'm like, yeah, this channel's gonna go far. I got faith in this channel. A little bit later, I was actually surprised when the head of the channel came in contact with me to be a part of it all, and I just remember thinking, oh cool, that sounds like something I'd enjoy doing. And now here we are. The channel has been around for one year, and I hope to continue to be a part of it till the end. Once again, Happy Anniversary Chronicles. Well, hello everyone, Chris here, and it's our anniversary, or well, this channel's anniversary. After four months of hiatus, we are finally back with actual videos and actual content that you guys want to see. Not some, not some vlogs, not some trailers. Well, well, there have been some because I wanted to get trailers for every series, but videos. Fire Emblem, Pokemon, Tales, all these are finally coming back. I'm just ecstatic, really. But what I'm more ecstatic about is that we have reached around 3,500 subscribers by this episode, which is amazing. I never would have thought that I would have gotten that far. And I never would have gotten that far on my own if I voiced everything that we did. If I didn't have the help of Loxton, if I didn't have the help of Birdkeeper Toby, if I didn't have the help of Hyperion, this channel wouldn't be what it is today. And I'm grateful. I'm just so grateful that people are interested in these things. Like Soccer Wars, no one ever knew about that series. It's literally one of the best Sega series out there that no one ever knew about. And I'm just glad that Hyperion was able to bring that to light. And Loxton was able to bring the story of Fire Emblem to life and Toby part of the Pokemon series and everything. But enough of that. That is where we are and it is happy and humbling, really. So what about the fate of Chronicles Gaming Volume 1, you might ask? Well, if you've been watching the trailers that we've been releasing this week, you'll see that everything has a start date now. Everything has been planned out. Fire Emblem is the closest one, so I'll talk about that first. As you see in the Fire Emblem video, Fire, Fire Emblem video, as you see in the Fire Emblem video, you will know that this month is essentially Fire Emblem month. Every Saturday starting this weekend will be a new episode of Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Awakening, Fire Emblem Fates, and Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE. All of those series will be coming out in that order this month. Alongside the Fire Emblem documentary on the week that Tokyo Mirage... Tokyo Mirage Sessions will be coming out. And, but you might say, but wait Chris, four new Fire Emblem titles got announced. You're not done yet. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. I know I'm not done. Let's see, Fire Emblem Heroes came out a couple days ago. Fire Emblem Echoes is coming out in May. Fire Emblem Warriors is coming out in the fall. And then sometime next year is F the Fire Emblem Switch title. All those will eventually be covered. As the documentary that will be releasing on Loxton Channel is only the first version of it. We'll be continually up updating the documentary on this channel. And we'll be doing a second version sometime in December. With, e with Heroes, Echoes, and Warriors in it. And then next year, whenever the Switch title comes out, that will get its own video and we'll be updating the documentary there 
for a third version. The second version will be coming out in December alongside that video, Echoes, Heroes, and Warriors video. The third version of it will be coming out next year, and that will be going out on Twitch or Vidme. And that is basically it. Fire Emblem will finally be, be finishing, thankfully. And we'll also eventually be splitting all the episodes into ones just based on the games. When we've fully figured out the stories behind them all, we'll be editing them and releasing them sometime later this year as singular episodes. So Shadow Dragon and Gaiden will be split, like Binding Blade, Sacred Stones will be split. Everything will have its own individual episode and given unique care to each of them. And that's... That has to deal with a lot of the new philosophy behind how we're making stuff for Chronicles now. We're not doing, like, multiple games in one episode anymore. Or, well, for for one, not for one especially important series. We're going to be splitting them apart so we can give them all the credit they're due. So none of you feel like they've been shafted or misrepresented or anything like that. We're trying our best to avoid that from now on. And that's why we're going to be splitting them apart. And the biggest, like, representation of that is the Pokemon series. Yes, Pokemon, which you might not remember, since it came out around February or, or later than that, is finally ready to become a main series. Yes, we finally have actual people behind it. Uh, we got we got all the voice actors wrangled up and they're finally getting to voicing stuff and we already have two of the generations covered but after looking through what i've done and what i've written and also looking at the length length of stuff some of you might not want to watch all of it because it covers all the spin-offs anime manga all that stuff it covers all that so it's really long and a lot, a lot of people might want to watch it some people might just want to watch the development of the main games so, I am going to be splitting them into two episodes. So one based on the entire generation, and another just based on the main game. Which will be releasing on Fridays and Saturdays whenever they come out. And since these videos are incredibly long, they are going to be every three weeks or so. There's going to be Pokemon, then two other episodes of another series, then Pokemon. Because it just takes so long to, to make. And I feel justified in doing that. So that's what we will be doing. And the Pokemon series is actually especially important, especially important, because we're going to be, or at least I'm going to be, hopefully, if we can get, if we can get the the Pokemon series to be like shared and liked everywhere. If we can get really good promotion. If we can get the eyes of of the Pokemon Company and Nintendo on it, then we can act. I can get access. To the world tournament and why would i want access to the world tournament of pokemon we ask why would i want to be able to go there because now it's only invitation only that's because i want to create not only the pokemon documentary which we'll be doing with every series as usual i want to create a documentary about pokemon in general the first documentary series that is about something other than a video game or well it's about video games but in more like uh, be be themed around something, I mean. It'll be themed around something. And I'm gonna be asking the question, what does Pokemon mean to you? And a, a couple other questions. But that's gonna be the main crux of this documentary. Like, what does Pokemon mean to the world? That is what I'm gonna be talking about with that. And in lieu of this, I'll be showing the first of that is the biggest project that we're gonna be, or one of the biggest projects that we're gonna be tackling over the coming year. Because in the trailer that I announced, it's not going to be just all that. Hopefully we can do more. But to be able to do more, we're going to need some stuff. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But last, but not least, for Chronicles of Gaming Volume 1, is Tales. Tales will be, of course, split into indiv individual episodes just covering the games. Because I especially feel like I shafted Tales of Eternia with the video that we did on... Fantasia and all that. And those will be the intervening episodes between the Pokemon episodes. I really don't have anything to speak about that. I doubt like we could ever get like an official documentary with that series since I'm going to be shit talking Namco a lot. But yeah, that is Chronicles Gaming 
Volume 1. But what about Chronicles of Gaming Volume 2, you may ask? Well, that is going to be happening in September. I'm going to be taking a month-long break in August from the, ch from the channel. No Chronicles of Gaming will be out. Debut and Icons, which I'll be talking about right after this little segment, will be continuing with that. But I'm going to be taking a month and then coming back in September with Chronicles of Gaming Volume 2. Kingdom Hearts, Legend of Zelda, Elder Scrolls, Halo, and Xenoblade. Or, well, Xeno. All those series will be coming out around then. But I'm having a difficult, difficult time deciding what exactly to cover of those series. What to cover first and what to cover last. And some of you may want the Xeno series to come out first. Some of you might want Kingdom Hearts. Some of you might want Legend of Zelda. So to combat that, I am putting a poll down below that you can find. That is the poll for all these series. And whichever one is the most popular out of all of them. Here, well, in the list of popularity between those five, what's ever on top and what's ever bottom will go first and last. That will be how it goes. So if you want Xeno to go first, you gotta support it. If you want Legend of Zelda to go first, you gotta support it. It all depends, and I need to know soon so I can start planning for that for those series too. That is really all I have to say about Chronicles Game Volume 2. Nothing has been written, nothing has been created for it. It's just there. What order it's in is determined by you. All right, last but not least, for the Chronicles channel at least, is debut and icons. Essentially, these shows are Chronicles Gaming. They all are essentially the same thing, covering the history of video games. They just do it in a different way. Debut is basically just covering one game each episode from anything in all of video games. So like today we're going to be talking about my favorite game of all time. And next month we're going to be talking about Pokemon Go and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. A variety of games from a variety of franchises that have nothing to do with each other. It's not going to be any long ranging series. Anything that covers a franchise in its entirety is Chronicles of Gaming. And anything that covers one game at a time is debut. And for debut, it's gonna be that. It has a different intro and a different outro, and it's quicker. We don't have the minute 30 long intro to the like episode or anything like that. We try to cut everything out. So, or we try to cut the fat. So it's really fast and really quick to do. And that is really it for, for debut. It's simple, easy to understand. And anyone who wants a series to get made can just Comment in the comment section of any video, and we'll find it, and we'll put it up there, and if, if people really want it, we'll make it an episode. If not, we'll just write something on the, an article on the site for it. Who knows, eventually one of them might become an actual series for Chronicles of Gaming, but that's all determined by popularity. I know I did like a poll for Chronicles of Gaming for Season 2, and I call it Season 2 until Volume 2, but I threw that out because it, it creatively inhibited me. So I think from now on, starting with volume three after volume two for each volume there will be one series that is chosen by you guys that's how it'll be but icons icons is basically chronicles of gaming like debut has some things cut that make chronicles of gaming what it is but I icons is essentially chronicles of gaming but it covers a developer instead of a, a, just a video game franchise. So like for instance, we're gonna be covering Mistwalker Studios, Hironobu Sakaguchi's development studio that has like Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, and Last Story to its name. And also we're gonna be covering hardware, which is gonna be interesting. We're gonna be completely talking about that stuff from a historical stance about the development and all that and giving Slight insight to like games that were popular with the system with each system we cover But for the most part though that kind of stuff will be just focusing on hardware development and impact How like the Sega Genesis was made or how how the Nintendo Inter Entertainment System or Famicom was made like those kind of things debut will be appearing Well, that deal debut will be appearing. Well, I guess it will be appearing today as its first episode and eventually coming in At the end of February again, and then going for a bi-weekly thing every other week. But Icons will be coming out on March 10th with Blue Dragon as its topic. And yeah, that is Icons and Debut. We will not go further, we will not make any more shows after this, for at least Chronicles 
It will only be about gaming. It will be about nothing else. That is why I'm dedicating that to. But some of you may know that we already have other series planned that cover other mediums like filmmaking and animation. That is going to be on a different channel because I've, I don't want to force any of you to watch something you might not be interested in. If you only like video games and nothing else, you may not watch them. And I don't really want to force people to watch them, so that's why I'm making another channel coming November 2017 called Re-Chronicles. Re-Chronicles is going to be about animation, filmmaking, basically the visual mediums. While Chronicles is about the interactive mediums, and the only really act interactive medium is gaming. So that's another reason why I'm splitting the, the channels and shows. Now I have anima Chronicles of Animation, Chronicles of Filmmaking, and also a debut version of animation and filmmaking. And that will be the crux of that channel. We're going to be covering series like Konosuba, The World God Only Knows, Cowboy Bebop, Firefly, Pushing Daisies, The Twilight Zone, and more. Our first series are going to be Ruby. We're going to be covering the entirety of Ruby, volumes 1 through 4, on there by the end of the year. And also we're going to be covering Edgar Wright, the guy who made Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and more. We're going to be covering him and his filmography and his past and all that. We're going to be doing that and that'll be the first series. And then after that will be Star Wars. So look out for that. We don't have anything written, of course. It's way too late or, or way too early to do anything or anything made and no assets created. It's just an idea. If anything interferes with Chronicles of Gaming, it's going to get shafted. It's going to be thrown out. Chronicles of Gaming is the core of the Chronicler Media Productions. That's that's what we are now, Chronicler Media. That's what I'm going to be calling our little production group of sorts. Chronicles of Gaming is at the core, and if anything interferes, it goes away. That's how it will always be. November 2017, Chronicles of Animation, Chronicles of Filmmaking, and debut. A new version of debut. All premiering over the two months, November and December. Okay, that is all of the shows out of the way, but there's still some more important matters to discuss with you. And the most important one, which I'll start out with, is Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that allows an audience to support the creators they love. And we have set up a Patreon account for the channel. Now, some of you may not feel that we're worth spending money on at this point. And so or some of you may be ecstatic about it. I'm not sure. And I'd love to hear what you think of our Patreon down below and what we can do to improve it. But I want to do Chronicles full time. I want to be able to work on all these shows and help out our new and budding team members and the ones that might join along the way to create these series and make them spectacular. But to do that, I need to make a living. I need to be able to take care of myself as a human being. Ad revenue can only do so much. Eventually we'll be adding in sponsors or sponsor sponsorships to the mix, mix and everything, but I don't want to do that. I want the, to remove the ads too, because I know, I hate ads, everyone does. There's just the fact of, fact of life of YouTube that we need I, I need to have ads to make a little bit of money off of this, off of my work which anyone deserves to be paid for their work. Even if you don't think we deserve to be paid for our work, this takes time and energy, especially with Chronicles. It takes a lot out of my life, and I've been focusing on it solely for months. I'll say, if every one of you, every 3,500 of you, supported the channel for just a dollar every month, we would be able to go full time, increase the production value of all of our shows, even more so than you'll be seeing have them all a accurately represent whatever series we're covering. Be able to pay our voice actors that take the time out of their day to record when they could be doing something else or working on their own channel. I want to actually be able to travel abroad and around the nation to be able to go to the developers we talk about and actually interview them because that is what I really want Chronicles to eventually be. I want it to be a place where we can interview developers and get the honest truth behind the video games. An article on Wikipedia or any other or an interview somewhere can only tell you so much 
Sometimes it might be misleading. Sometimes they might be exaggerating things. And I want the real story behind every video game. And if I can travel to places like Tokyo, France, Germany, and California, and all these other places that have video game developers that we talk about, then I, I would be able to make something even better than what we can be capable with now. And also event type series like Pokemon, what, what does Pokemon mean to you, documentary. Like all these things. All these things require money to do. And funding. We need funding. If we are funded by you guys, then I can stay independent. Nothing will ever come to affect Chronicles. We'll always be able to create the truth. Even if it hurts. Even if it's painful. I'll be able to do it. And even if we aren't able to get enough money from Patreon to be able to, like, support ourselves and do it full time, and I have to take a job. Whenever I have the time, I will continue to work on Chronicles to my utmost abilities to try and get it all done on time with the schedule we've had planned out. Which you can find conveniently in the description down below. If there is anything for debut or icons or the filmmaking and animation series because those are subject to change and all of our team members have their own lives to live, they aren't getting paid for this, they have school to worry about, so we aren't going to force them to... We're going we're gonna to try to keep the deadlines, but if something goes over, if something someone doesn't have the time, then we aren't going to worry about that. If you feel it within your heart the Chronicles is worth your patronage, then please support us on Patreon. And that's all I ask. It's not an obligation, it's a request. From me to you. I trust you guys and I wanted to let you know What's going on with my? What's going on with everything? And we need funding to make this thing that I've planned and more that I haven't even talked about yet, and I won't be talking about now. There are all secret projects from everyone. If you support us for just a dollar, you get like episodes the second we've made them. That's not exactly like a week early or anything like that. Like if we've made them like a couple days before, we'll release them on there. But otherwise. And there's also high-res thumbnails, audio versions of episodes, and a bunch of other different quirks and additions that you can get. And it's all subject to change. So yeah, I'm done rambling about Patreon. If you want to support us again, you want to support, not, don't want to support us, you don't have to. Right, that's it. So that's what's coming in, in the future for Chronicles. In the next two or three months, we'll have made more content than we have made last year. So that will tell that tells you how much we have planned and we're going to be doing. We're gonna be working with a plethora of creators like Bolt Legends, True Green 7, Hoops and Hip Hop, Video Game, Storytime, and so much more that we haven't even found a plan to do with. So that is our little preview of what's happening with Chronicles. This is gonna be a year that is like quadruple as good as 2016. You still have Chronicles of Gaming in 2016 and Chronicles in 2016, but you haven't seen 2017 yet. 2017 will exceed 2016 by wide margin. Margin. And I am incredibly excited. This is this is what truly makes me happy to make these videos and see you guys' reactions and how you feel about each of the series and, and talk about your personal experiences with every one of them. That's what truly brings me joy every single time I make a video. It's not just like bringing the stories of these developers to life. It's just I, I love hearing your opinions in the comments section having an actual conversation with everyone instead of being just some uh, mindless thing that exists and makes videos and then never talks to anyone. I don't want to be like that. And I couldn't have gone here without your help. Chronicles is a group joint effort. It is not because of one person this is made. It is made possible by the work of tons of people. From the voice actors to the team members to me to you guys to the creators we talk about. All of them are important cogs in the machine of Chronicles. And as I said a while back in the video, I'm just so humbled that people love this content. I want to provide more in the future than anyone has ever seen. And I want to become what you guys have told me to be one of the best channels on YouTube. I want to become that. Some people might think I'm gloating or something. So I. Or something, or some people might think I'm too ambitious. 
but I want to become one of the best channels on YouTube, and I mean it. I want to exceed. I am gre I am selfish in that regard. Some people say you should be doing it for the fun of things, and I am, but I want to be one of the best channels on YouTube so that I can bring all these stories to other people. Not because I selfishly want the views and subscribers, because I want to bring all these stories to millions of people. And that is what I truly want and hope to get in the future. Chronicles is a story of humanity and their creations. That is what we are. And that's what we'll be telling for the near future. Whether it be sad, happy, or downright depressing. We'll cover it in the most truthful way possible. And it's all thanks to you. They were here. But anyway, that is it from me. If you didn't hear the first bit of the video, we are doing a Twitch stream on Twitch. Uh, about my favorite game of all time and playing it there and you can ask me questions and all that jazz on that stream but next up is going to be a doozy we're going to be having two episodes premiering one's a, a remake and one's a new series debut it's going to be about my favorite game of all time and i hope you guys are really excited to watch it so if you're interested in watching stick around if you want to watch the newer episode i'll leave a link in the description where you can skip to the latest episode but other than that that is it from me i am so glad to be back thank you for continuing your thirst for knowledge after all this time Pokemon. It's a simple name, instantly memorable and iconic in nature, a nature that has seeped itself into nearly every culture around the world. Unbeholden to any strict set of values, it flourishes wherever it goes and is eminently relatable to anyone who plays it. A classic tale of a young child leaving their home and going on a journey. The franchise, spanning two decades, has grown various shades of simplicity and complexity for such a tale. From its seemingly straightforward battle system to its devilishly designed inner workings, Pokemon is a series that rarely exists within the gaming sphere, one that can appeal to all skills levels and all mindsets. Its characters range from charming to downright frightening. Its creatures that make the franchise what it is, layered with intelligent design that both amaze and mystify. Many try to exceed it, others try to copy, but none have even come close enough to be considered a contender, a series unrivaled in its success. The story behind something such as this must be grand and epic in its own undertaking, but the greatest stories often have the simplest of beginnings, and the story of Pokemon is no different. A franchise that started because of a sincere love for video games grew into a media empire that dominates the global entertainment industry to this day, and it all began with just a boy, a bug, and a dream. The creator of the Pokemon phenomenon was a boy at heart, living a dream. Born in 1965 in Mishida, a suburb of Tokyo, Satoshi Tajiri was someone who was absolutely enthralled with the outside, and more importantly, insects. He loved hunting for them, in ponds, rivers, and forests. He was constantly figuring out new and interesting ways to catch them. His passion was so great that his friends started to call him Dr. Bug, jokingly. But his childhood merriment wouldn't last for long, as by the late 70s, the fields and ponds Tajiri frolicked in while he was a kid were paved over for apartment buildings and shopping centers. But his passion had already switched to his future, video games. While in technical school, he grew attached to these and ended up missing a ton of his classes. One of the arcades he spent his time in even gave gave Tajiri a full-size Space Invaders machine to take home, a token of his devotion. Even with all of this, Tajiri still graduated from a two-year program at the Tokyo National College of Technology. His father wanted him to be an electrical utility repairman, but this 
was not his dream. His dream would be realized in 1981 after winning a contest sponsored by Sega for a game design concept. His passion had been ignited and there was no going back. A year later, he would found Game Freak with his friend Ken Sugimori. This was a gaming magazine for the most hardcore of gamers. Throughout this time, the magazine would enjoy modest sales, but steadily grew more and more popular. Tajiri was so dedicated to it that he had been writing the magazine entirely by hand for a time. But as he began to learn more and more about the industry, he felt an interest in making them himself. To learn the best way he knew how, Tajiri took apart his NES all by himself to see the inner workings, and in conjunction, learned how to program for the system. Because of this, in 1987, Tajiri published his first game, Quinty, a puzzle-based action game. The modest sales from his first outing into the industry lighted the spark that he had been waiting for. Before he knew it, two years later, Tajiri had officially turned Game Freak into its own video game developer. Developing various titles for Nintendo and Sega alike, such as Jerry Boy, Yoshi, Mario and Wario, and Pulse Man, Game Freak was on a roll. They weren't the most popular video game developer, but they weren't doing bad themselves. But all this would change in an instant with the spark of creation. On an ordinary day in the early 90s, Tajiri saw two children playing together with a Game Boy and a Game Link cable. This brought back memories of his childhood catching bugs and exploring unknown and hidden areas. He imagined the insects he had previously captured crawling across the cable between the two systems, transferring themselves between each game. As he continued to ponder the capabilities of the Game Link cable, his idea grew. He wanted to give the children of today the same childhood experiences that he had had. His idea was further added upon by Gashapon toy capsules, little balls that held toys within them. Tajiri came up with the idea of collectible, tradable, evolvable battling monsters. He would call it Capsule Monsters. Presenting the idea to Nintendo of Japan, at first it was rejected outright. Going back to the drawing board due to copyright issues, the name was changed to Capumon, and then the now famous Pocket Monsters. The concept was pitched once again and was nearly put on the back burner once more if it wasn't for the Nintendo icon that was Shigeru Miyamoto. With his approval, the project was finally greenlit for development, and Miyamoto soon took Tajiri under his wing. The project at first seemed like a guaranteed hit. While Shigeru Miyamoto may have been the helping guy for the fledgling developer, they already had a dream team of their own. Tajiri would be the game designer to bring his world to life. Jinichi Masuda would lead the programming division and lend his talents to the amazing soundtrack the series would be known for. Ken Sugimori would create the now iconic designs for each individual pocket monster, putting careful and intricate detail into each and every one of them. These three, along with many more talented people, would bring this interesting and unique world to life. But it wouldn't just be a walk in the park. Development would take six demanding years to complete. Complete. Low budgets were a constant threat and nearly resulted in Game Freak going bankrupt. Several staff members left, with the rest being forced to work long and unpaid hours. If these games were a failure, it could have bankrupted the company, destroying Tajiri's dream for good. But somehow, against all of the odds, they were able to release it to the masses of Japan. Releasing on February 27, 1996, as Pocket Monsters Akai and Pocket Monsters Midori, two games that would revolutionize and revitalize the slowly fading game. Boy, the two were separate experiences, but were inherently the same. Each would follow a young boy named Red, or a name of your own choosing, including several inspired by Satoshi Tajiri and Shigeru Miyamoto themselves. You follow your trainer as he picks between three starters, Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle, and takes off to capture all 150 pocket monsters and defeat the Elite Four. His journey would take him through the Kanto region, fighting fellow trainers, collecting gym badges, facing off against a rival, and dismantling an evil organization bent on conquering the world. It was a story that had been told time and time again, but not with such an interesting twist as the Pocket Monsters. From Pikachu to Snorlax, there was something for everyone to enjoy. The game was filled to the brim with 150 of these unique and intriguing creatures that the players could battle with different types. This rock, paper, scissors gameplay mechanic made Pocket Monsters a unique beast that no one had ever seen before. Its battle system was simple, yet complex at the same time. Even Tajiri's idea of insects crawling across the link cable came into play as players could trade monsters with each other and even battle for fun. Pocket Monsters Akiri and Midori were Satoshi Tajiri's dream come alive. Fighting with bugs was replaced with pocket monsters, the jars used to catch them were replaced with iconic pokeballs, and the many variations within the species of Pokemon were just as diverse as Tajiri's bugs. While this game seemed like a feat in and of itself, the sales were pretty modest at first. While it grew in popularity for children who couldn't afford the fancy flashy newer consoles, it wasn't a phenomenon just yet. That would happen because of one lowly programmer, Shigeki 
Morimoto. At the request of Game Freak, he had taken a 151st Pokemon, the elusive and mysterious Mew, and hidden it within the code of the games. It was only supposed to be available at public events, but when the ultra-popular gaming magazine Koro Koro leaked its existence, the nation was whipped up into a frenzy. Weekly sales increased into monthly sales and at some point quadrupled. With a highly competitive metagame, many elusive monsters to find, evolve and trade, Pokemon was a bona fide phenomenon. But there were still some problems at hand. Pocket Monsters Akai was selling, but Midori wasn't even on the same level. Glitches, bugs and graphical oversights played both, but not as much as Midori. To improve on this, Game Freak quickly made an available Pocket Monsters Baru, complete with improved graphics, sounds and several bugs fixed. But the Pocket Monster craze wouldn't just stop there. In October, Media Factory released the first Pokemon trading cards, and it wasn't just an anomaly, it was a sensation. Pokemon trading card sales were rivaling the video games themselves. The series even expanded into a manga with the Pokemon Pocket Monsters, a gag manga using crude humour and slapstick, which stars Red and his rude Clefairy. Still riding on the coattails of the originals, a third Pokemon phenomenon begun because of the Pokemon anime. Premiering on April 1st, 1997, it quickly gained popularity, following a young Pokemon trainer named Ash Ketchum. Starting off in a similar situation to Red, Ash is given no other option but a Pikachu. And after several hijinks, the two begin to form a bond and a memorable friendship as they come across even more lovable characters. The show was popular enough to make the lovable Pikachu, a pocket monster that you could have just forgotten about along the way, into the icon for the series at large. When you thought of Pokemon, you thought of Pikachu. Pokemon had taken the country by storm. Children's conversations and livelihoods were filled to the brim with finding new Pokemon, battling friends and discovering new locations. The children of Japan were enthralled by this experience, and Game Freak sought to establish that fact more clearly. On April 25th, 1998, the first Pokemon Center was opened up in Tokyo, specializing in Pokemon merchandise. And this cemented Pokemon as a mainstay of Japanese culture, but all that was about to change. With such a successful series like Pokemon, Nintendo knew they had a winner on their hands, so where better to look for Pokemon's next conquest than to America? As the localization began, they attempted to change the Pocket Monster's iconic designs, as they feared the cute designs would not appeal to Western gamers. Even more troubles plagued the team. Once again, copyright slapped the series in the face. They needed to change the name to make sense, but still having the same meaning. Combining Pocket Monsters into one word, their answer was Pokemon. The phenomenon had its true name, and was set to conquer the world, but before they could reach the states, the anime would enter into the lives of the nation's children first. And they were hooked. Throwing out the glitched Midori and giving them their first translated names, Pokemon Red and Blue were finally unleashed onto the world. The franchise soon exploded into popularity across America. Kids on school grounds everywhere weren't playing basketball, they were playing Pokemon. Selling a mammoth 31 million units, Pokemon had become one of the best selling franchises of all time in one fell swoop. And it was a great game to boot. Gotta catch them all was what every kid was thinking. It was a phenomenon that no one had quite seen before like this. Eventually, to round off Generation 1, Pokemon Yellow was released in 1999. It was a sequel that attempted to embody the spirit of the anime that had made the series so popular. Instead of the three starters to choose from, you had one lone Pikachu. While they added in the feature of Pikachu's mood, an enhanced colour palette for the Game Boy Colour, and the ability to have him walk outside his Pokeball with you, Pokemon Yellow was still mostly played the same. All the characters and Pokemon that fans had come to adore were all neatly compacted into a single cartridge for any and all to enjoy. The trading card game latched onto America as well, and just like like the games, it was even more popular outside of Japan. Pokemon even started to develop its own competitive scene with the video games and trading cards alike. To this day, it's one of the most deep and satisfying experiences out there. It was Pokemania, and the world was encapsulated by it, just like being in their own little Pokeball. The merchandise, the anime, the trading cards, the manga, and of course, the games themselves had captured the eyes of the world for all to see. There was nowhere to go but up, and one man was about to help them get there. Well hello dear viewer, and thank you for watching another episode of Chronicles. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for amazing content every single Saturday. But who am I? Well I'm Birdkeeper Toby, a Pokertuber of sorts. If you'd like, fly on over to my channel and you can find other Pokemon videos, theories, as well as a whole range of Pokemon Sun and Moon content. So what do you think about Pokemon Red and Blue? Do you feel that the original 151 Pokemon are better than the rest? Or has the series crafted better ones over time? Chris and I would love to hear what you have to say down below. Anyway, that's it from us, but be sure to soar high, Pokemon Masters, and continue your thirst for gaming knowledge.
So, there's a little bit of story behind this about why Chronicles came to be. And I wanted to talk about that this episode. Chronicles is not really my original creation. Or, well, it is. Everything that I've made with it, everything I've done with it, the cross dissolve style and all that, that's me. But at its core, what the show is, I didn't make that. Someone else did six years ago. The original inspiration for Chronicles is a show called All Your History Are Belong to Us. It was a machinima show, and it was the greatest show on YouTube, in my opinion, at the time. It covered the history of video games from beginning to end, and it did it with an amazing narrator and really relaxing music in the background. It was amazing. I love that show to death. I always... It was the one show, the first show that I ever legitimately watched and planned to watch every single week whenever it came out. As time went on, it got bigger and then it, and then the creators, the original creators left. A new season came out, no one liked it, and it died. And it died. It never came back. I was really saddened by this. It was really the only show like that on YouTube. There's no really history show that, that put, made things interesting. It was all random stuff. I can't really remember the exact state of YouTube five, like six years ago, but it wasn't as neat and tidy as today with all the professional channels and all that. But I was dissatisfied with that. And for years, for for five years, or well, four years actually, I, I wanted to break into YouTube because of them. They inspired me to break into YouTube. And I came up with an innumerable number of channels. Origi one time I had 19 channels going on. I had too many ideas. Eventually that compounded into the Soccer Wars channel, which was my fir first big channel where I talked about the Soccer Wars series and that didn't really blow up because Soccer Wars wasn't big. But now people of that specific niche have a channel or two for them. And then after I made Soccer Wars Chronicle, which is the cutscene and stuff like that, eventually I came upon the idea of Tamidus, which was like a combination of like my three favorite things, Taekwondo, video games, and filmmaking. I combined them into a word using Latin and Korean words. It was really weird. No one understood what it was, but in the during that time I came up with an idea called You which is a documentary about YouTubers. And I made that for my documentary class in college and it did really well. Everyone enjoyed it. Everyone loved it and I wanted to do more. And so I did another episode, but eventually that fell, out, fell apart. But because of that, I met Loxton. Loxton was the first person to help out with that series. And around that time, he was coming up with a hub channel idea, which as you know, faded away and now it's just him. And so he gave me a shot at making a series because he felt with you that I, that I could do a really good job. So after some time and remembering all your history are belong to us, I felt I had a duty to cover Soccer Wars. So that was my first series. I created Chronicles or it was, I, Chronicles of Blossom or something like that. It was a really weird name. No one understood what it meant. I have no idea why Lox let me use that. And it didn't say specifically Soccer Wars or something like that. But that series did sort of well. The, the first episode was a complete and utter failure. I voiced it with the most terrible deadpan voice acting I've ever seen in my life. I don't know why I let it out. Everyone hated it. So we deleted it, make it made a new version. And then that series did less than that and just kept going down until we had about 5,000, 6,000 people watching concurrently. And that series died. And Chronicles potentially could have died with it. But we didn't want to do that. Or, well, at least I didn't want to do it. I didn't want it to die. So I took a page out of Did You Know Gaming and asked, asked Loxton to voice our next series, Fallout. Because Fallout 4 was coming out, so we thought... That would be the best bet for our next series. So we did that. We launched the Fallout series and it did amazingly well. 35,000 people watched the first episode or maybe even more by now. Tons of people have watched that series and they loved it. The problem wasn't 
the content or the writing or graphics or anything like that. Everyone loved that. Everyone thought I did an amazing job. They didn't like the voice work. So replacing me with Loxton or, in, or interchanging out of any other YouTuber became the best way to make an episode of Chronicles. And then we continued with that. Onward, onward. I had school, so sometimes I couldn't, or I could never keep up with a weekly schedule. I couldn't keep up with that, so I just, or even a bi-weekly one. I, I gave up, and I eventually finished it in, in March. In the meantime, I redid the Sakura Wars series with Hyperion, and that came out in February, um, February 6th. And that launched the channel as it is. And we kept going onward, and I usually <sighs> couldn't get episodes out on time. Things took take, took too long. I couldn't keep up with a weekly schedule, and I hated myself. Mostly, it wasn't because of school. I was I was a procrastinator. I'll admit that. I was a procrastinator. I did things at the last moment, or I didn't do them at all. And that's what happened. That's why Chronicles got delayed. And it really didn't have a clear vision of everything. So I wanted to take a step back and clear that vision. Find what I want Chronicles to really be. And I also found a team. A team of talented people. Jameson Lee, Daryl Quinn, and Luis Eduardo, and others. All these guys are help, uh, ha help me, or have started to help me on this channel and have proved to be really good. They aren't at my level yet, which I wouldn't expect because some of them are just starting. So what, there's only been one episode completed from one of them, but I see potential in all of them and they are the future of Chronicles. The future of Chronicles is working with all these people, working with the voice actors, working with the editors and writers and creating something unique, a community. A community of people who talk to each other. A community of people, people who listen to each other. A community that isn't based on a basically mindless entity like Diddy No Gaming, where who really doesn't interact with other people on, on there. I want to be the I want to be that kind of person. I want to be able to interact with everyone and get to know my commenters and the people and my subscribers and everyone who watches this stuff. And then went off on a ramble, but essentially started out because one show got cancelled, All Your History Are Belong to Us, then I wanted to make a channel, then I went through tons of ideas, settled on one, didn't do good the first time, did better the second time, and it kept getting better after that. Then stopped, gained team members, and now we are here today with Chronicles Gaming Volume 1 finally going back into production and finally getting finished by July 22nd. I'll put that there. July 22nd. Hopefully. All dependent on, on certain factors and stuff. But that is the story of Chronicles.